Morning's border report. We're learning more about the plane reportedly full of immigrants heading to President Biden's beach home in Delaware as new details emerge about who is crossing into the U.S. and these rapidly rising numbers of immigrants who are coming illegally into the U.S. Now, we heard, of course, about uh, that bus full of immigrants who was basically put on the lawn of Vice President Kamala Harris's home last week. Our Robert Sherman is joining us now with all of the details on this ever developing story. Robert? News Nation was waiting in Delaware, along with state officials and aid workers, for the chartered plane believed to be headed there, landing just 19 miles from President Biden's house in Rehoboth Beach. Early Tuesday morning, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis reportedly threatened to send the migrants to Biden's doorstep. Just last week, we saw him fly migrants to Martha's Vineyard and Texas Governor Greg Abbott drop asylum seekers in front of Vice President Kamala Harris's residence. Delaware was prepared, but the flight was a no-show. We tracked its planned path from Texas to Florida to Delaware, but it made a refueling stop in Teterboro, New Jersey, not far from where the president is right now for his United Nations address in New York City. The White House calling this a cruel political stunt. Our heads up did not come from Governor DeSantis because his only goal is, uh, as he's made it really quick, clear, is to create chaos and use immigrants fleeing communism as political pawns. Both Abbas and DeSantis say they will keep sending migrants from the southern border to democratic states and self-proclaimed sanctuary cities until the Biden administration fixes the country's immigration crisis. I think what we're continuing to do is use every tool at our disposal uh, to insulate the state of Florida uh, from the negative ramifications of his reckless border policies. And we ha are hearing from some of those migrants who were flown to Martha's Vineyard. They have come together, some of them, and filed suit against Florida Governor Ron DeSantis over this movement. As you can imagine, the governor of Florida pushing back on all of that, insisting he's going to continue to do this until the border gets fixed. Adrian. All right, our thanks to you, Robert. Obviously, uh, this is something that's seeming to escalate, especially as the vice president and the president's homes are now being affected. Niall Stanage, White House columnist for The Hill, uh, joining us right now. You know, Niall, critics are calling this a political stunt, using immigrants as pawns. But the Biden administration has been busing and flying immigrants all over the country. Uh, there was very little publicized about it. In fact, I remember when our Brian Inton actually did a story months ago on this very topic. Uh, but is this a move that is resonating with some GOP voters? It's resonating with some GOP voters, no question. Republican voters broadly are more concerned about immigration or more hawkish on immigration than Democratic voters are. Now, there's obviously a wider population to consider, and that's where the argument that it's a stunt gets more traction, particularly in the, in the case of the Martha's Vineyard uh, Plains, for example, where you had 50 migrants who actually originated in Texas uh, being flown at the behest of the governor of Florida to Martha's Vineyard. That is, uh, to my mind, easier to cast as a stunt than the broader movement of migrants, many thousands of whom are now in um, New York or D.C. or other cities around the country. Yeah, so Massachusetts lawmakers, they're calling for a federal probe uh, of Governor Ron DeSantis's chartered flights of those immigrants to Martha's Vineyard. And now a law firm and nonprofit representing some of those immigrants is having a, to, they're suing uh, Governor DeSantis. How might this play out? In terms of the civil suit, I think that that on its face would appear to have more chance of success. Certainly that was the opinion of legal experts I spoke to yesterday. The key point on that suit is the argument that false promises were made to induce those migrants to get on those planes. Fraudulent inducement is what that concept is called in law, and it can lead to damages for fraud. There are other claims like emotional distress and so forth. The calls in Massachusetts and elsewhere for a federal probe are calls for a criminal investigation. It is possible to imagine a criminal investigation. It's a lot more difficult to imagine the federal authorities actually charging yes. the governor of Florida or any other state for that matter with a crime on such a um, contentious issue, unless the evidence was absolutely clear cut. You know, Governor DeSantis and Abbott, uh, they say uh, repeatedly that these immigrants are not forced to get on board. It's completely voluntary. Is there evidence of that? Uh, do we know what uh, those who are getting on board these buses and planes are being told about where they're going? 
So in relation to the planes and the Martha's Vineyard flights, that legal filing that was filed yesterday argues that, for example, those people were asked to sign documents that were not translated into Spanish, that there were uh, attempts made to win their trust by providing them minimal benefits like fast food vouchers, and that they were promised uh, treatment or benefits in Massachusetts for which they are not eligible. So that cuts against the voluntary argument. As I understand it, there is a stronger argument in some of the cases of buses coming from Texas that people were voluntarily asked, would you prefer to be in New York or Chicago or DC than here, and said yes, and then traveled. And that's, there's nothing illegal about that. Okay, one more quick question. There are a number of Republican and Democratic leaders saying their states are burdened and that sanctuary cities as well as the federal government should step up and help. But have we seen any shift in the messaging of leadership in other states saying we will gladly receive these immigrants? Um, I'm not sure about gladly, but there has actually been a shift. I mean, if you look at New York City, for example, the mayor there, Eric Adams, has uh, pointed out that there have been a number of temporary migrant shelters opened, more are scheduled. The mayor has even held out the possibility of cruise ships being used as temporary accommodation for some of these migrants. So the argument, I suppose, is this: this has actually shifted the debate. Uh, the question is, um, in what direction and for how long? All right, Niall Stanage, obviously a conversation we will continue to have here on Morning in America. Good to see you again. All right. You. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.